Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Okay, so let's remind ourselves of the ideal gas law. Okay, so the equation PV equals NRT, so pressure times volume is equal to the moles of the gas times the gas constant and the temperature. And remember also that gases are described in terms of four observables, pressure, temperature, volume, and moles of gas. Now the gas constant that we're using is going to be the one that has the liter atmosphere mole Kelvin units, and so that's why I've listed these units here for each of our observables. Okay, now the ideal gas law, if we remind ourselves, it just says that the behavior of a gas in terms of its pressure, temperature, and volume depends only on the number of moles of gas, not on the identity of the gas. So the gas molecules don't interact with each other, so they don't care what gas is in there. They, they don't care about the other gas molecules. They're not interacting with them. So the pressure, temperature, and volume just depends on how much there is, but not what it is. Okay? Now if it makes it a little bit easier to visualize this, you can think of the moles of a gas as the number of molecules. So you can, you, you know, just picture it that way. But basically when it comes right down to it, the moles of gas is just the amount of gas that we have. All right. Now Dalton's law extends this idea to mixtures of gases. Okay, and it just says that the PVT, the pressure, volume, temperature properties of a mixture of gases will behave just like a pure ideal gas. Okay, so this is just based on this idea that the behavior of gas depends on the total number of moles of gas, but not what it is. Okay, so the behavior of this gas this pure gas in one container for the same number of moles of gas. So if we count these particles, we're going to see that the same moles of gas and this container is going to give the same pressure as this container, for instance. The gas molecules will exi exert the same pressures. Okay, and so as we said, both containers have the same volume and the same number of gas particles or moles of gas. And so at the same temperature, this pure gas and our mixture of gases will exert the same pressure. And that's what Dalton's law is saying. Now, we can write an equation to calculate the pressure of gas A. So let's go with our pure gas here. And all I've done is just subscripted. This is the pressure of gas A and this is the moles of gas A. Okay. That's all I've done is just added this little subscript identifying our gas, all right? But the only gas in the container is gas A, so this is the total pressure right here, okay? And so at any given temperature and volume, the pressure is just dependent on the moles of gas A. Okay, now let's take our container with the mixture of gases, okay? And let's do the same thing here, all right? So now I've changed it just a little bit. So here's the total pressure, okay? And it's going to be equal to the pressure of gas A in the container, okay? So you can see the these gas molecules exert a certain pressure. And then gas B, okay? So gas B, these little spotted guys. Gas C. All right, and finally gas D. Now, all four of these different pressures due to each different gas is going to add up to this total pressure, okay? And so rewriting this just a little bit different way, the pressure of A plus the pressure of B plus the pressure of C plus the pressure of D gives us the total pressure, okay? And this is another way to state Dalton's law of partial pressures. So basically, each gas exerts one-fourth of the total pressure, and they all behave independently of one another, okay? So our original container had the same amount of gas with just gas A, and that pressure would be the same as in this container with four different gases, because the number of moles of gas total is the same, okay? All right, so now let's talk about something called the mole fraction, okay? 
So we're going to look at just the contribution from gas B to the total pressure. And let's write an equation for it, just like we did on the previous slide, okay? So pressure of gas B is equal to the moles of B times RT divided by V. And now let's write the equation for the total pressure in a little bit different way also. Okay, so here's our total pressure. So this is the total moles of gas, no matter what they are, times R times T divided by V, okay? Now we're going to divide the pressure of gas V by the total pressure, okay? And we can see that we're going to have quite a few things in here to cancel out, right? Because the volume is the same, R is the same, and the temperature is the same. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? And now we're just going to end up with the pressure of B divided by the total pressure is equal to the moles of B divided by the total moles, all right? And so we're just going to take this moles of B divided by the moles total, and then we're going to call that the mole fraction of gas B. So that's what the mole fraction is. It's the fraction of B, the moles of B, divided by the total moles in the container. Okay? And that's the mole fraction. That's the mole fraction for gas B. Okay? Now if we rearrange our equation to calculate the fraction or part of the total pressure that is contributed by gas B, we would get, so here's the amount of pressure from gas B. It's just going to be the total pressure, whatever that is, multiplied by that mole fraction. Okay? And so we could do that with any one of the four gases in the container. Take the total pressure, multiply it by the mole fraction, which is going to be some number less than one, and we're going to get the fraction of the pressure that's due to just gas B. Okay? So we are calculating the pressure that gas B is contributing all by itself. Okay, so let's do a really simple example. All right? Now the atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and about 1% of various other gases. Now if the total pressure of the atmosphere is one atmosphere, then what is the partial pressure of nitrogen gas? Okay? So let's go ahead and make it specific. Okay, so the partial pressure of nitrogen in the total atmospheric pressure. All right, so here's our total atmospheric pressure and then the mole fraction of nitrogen. And so let's, so 78%, so let's convert that back to a decimal, divide it by 100, and now we're going to end up with 0.78, so that's the fraction, uh, times one atmosphere. So nitrogen gas exerts 0.78 atmospheres of pressure. So what's the partial pressure of oxygen gas then? So go ahead and do that in your head. All right. All right. So, right. It's 0.21 atmospheres. Okay. So let's go ahead and summarize this. All right. The bottom line is that the partial pressure of each gas in a container or in a flask or in whatever we have is only dependent on its mole fraction. So if each gas in this container has a mole fraction of one fourth, then each gas would contribute one-fourth of the total pressure. The gases don't interact with each other, okay? So the mixture of gases obeys the ideal gas law. All right, so here's a few conceptual problems. Just kind of do these in your head. Suppose the total pressure in the container is six atmospheres. What is the partial pressure of gas D, okay? All right, so gas D, if we count all the particles, we can see that it contributes one-fourth of the total pressure, which is six atmospheres. So we're just going to take 0.25, multiply it by six atmospheres, and we're going to get one and a half atmospheres. So could you do that in your head? All right, so try another one. So now we're going to increase the total pressure to 10 atmospheres, and now we're going to look at the partial pressures of two gases, B and C, together, okay? So do the same thing. 
Okay, so together gases B and C contribute one half of 10 atmospheres, okay? Now you don't have to do it where you're writing it out like this if you can do it in your head. But basically we're going to take the mole fraction of B and C, we're going to add them together, okay? They each contribute one fourth, multiply it by 10 atmospheres and we're going to end up with five atmospheres.